Hey everyone! In this video, I'll show you the three different types of videos that I can teach you how to make. I'll give you just enough information about each of them so you can start to think about which of the three types of videos is best for you and your students. Let's get to it! What you're seeing now is a screencast that I made using the program Explain Everything on an iPad. You'll see things appear as I talk about them. I like to start my videos with a few questions. So here, the questions you should be able to answer by the end of this video are, are you interested in producing videos? And what type of video should you make for your students? The three types of videos I'll teach you are the pencil and paper video, the basic screencast video, and a more advanced screencast video. First, the pencil and paper video. This is a very simple video to make and can be made very quickly. In fact, once you get the hang of it, the time it takes you to make this type of video is probably similar to the time it would take you to actually teach it to your class. If you do a lot of teaching using a dot cam, this will seem pretty familiar since you're basically just using your smartphone as a dot cam. The main difference is being that your smartphone records the video of what you're drawing while also recording the sound of your voice. It's also very inexpensive, mostly because it doesn't require a tablet like an iPad. Nor does it require you to learn how to use a screencasting program. In fact, the only equipment you need is a smartphone, pencil and paper, and a holder for your smartphone. If you have all three, you can get started right away. If you don't have a smartphone holder, these can be bought for around $30. All of the equipment and software I mention in this video, and their prices, as well as links to purchase them, can be found in a document you can access through a link I'll leave below this video. I also want to mention that I'm not paid by anyone to mention these products, I just think they're the best ones for making videos, and they're what I happen to use. The pencil and paper videos are probably best for those who don't have access to a tablet or aren't comfortable using one. It's also good for those who just prefer to teach with pencil and paper, which is a perfectly fine way to teach. Since it's the easiest type of video to make, you could even make producing a pencil and paper video something you ask your students to do as part of an assignment. Second is the basic screencast. These can also be made pretty fast, but require you to learn a screencasting program. One advantage of this is that it allows you to incorporate media, like images, other videos, and even a web page browser into your video. For example, if you have electronic images from the textbook you're using, you can insert them right into your screencast. Be aware, though, that most textbook images are copyrighted, so if you're only using them to teach your own students, it's probably fine, but posting them on YouTube or making them available to the public can put you at risk of copyright violation. Fortunately, there is plenty of excellent open source educational media out there. I'll have more to say about media licensing in later videos. The cost of all the equipment you'll need to make a basic screencast is about $1,250, but this can vary depending on exactly what you buy. The equipment you'll need includes a tablet. If you already have one, the startup cost is much less, maybe about $200 or so. I use a 12.9-inch iPad because I find the larger size makes it much easier to write and lay out my video. You'll also need a stylus. The cost of this can vary, but I found that the high-end styluses like the Apple Pencil are well worth the price. You'll also need a smartphone, a smartphone holder, and a lapel microphone that attaches to your shirt. Obviously, I'm not including the smartphone in the cost here. I'm assuming that you have one that is capable of taking decent video which pretty much all of them are nowadays. 
Like I said, you will need a screencasting program on your tablet. I use Explain Everything, but there are other good programs out there as well for screencasting. There are other approaches to making screencasts besides using a dedicated screencasting program, but in my experience, a tablet with a screencasting program produces the best videos and is much more forgiving if you make a mistake and need to fix it. It will take some time to learn the screencasting program, but once you're comfortable with it, it will take about as long to make each video as it would to prepare an in-person lecture of that same content. How long a basic screencast video takes to make can vary depending on how experienced you are at teaching the content, how much time you want to spend finding media, and how carefully you plan your video. The basic screencast is good for those who need to get their content online quickly and don't have a lot of time, but do have a lot of media like figures and diagrams that they need to present. It's a great way to put a lot of content online quickly. And it's how I taught my classes when the pandemic shut down my university, and we had to move our classes online with very little notice. My students ended up liking these videos a lot, and I'm probably going to use them in the future even when we return to in-person instruction. Last, we have the advanced screencast. This is more akin to making a movie and involves writing a script with production notes, recording audio and visuals separately, and involves some video editing. Consequently, these videos take longer to make, but provide, in my opinion, exceptionally valuable resources for students. When you view your finished video, you will know where that extra time went. The higher quality of these videos can also facilitate their use by other faculty at your institution as well as elsewhere. Once you are all set up and comfortable with your screencasting program and editing programs, a 10-minute video will generally take between two hours and two days to make, depending on how much editing of your script and video you want to do. You'll have to learn to use several programs, which include the screencasting program and a few editing programs. I'll provide some detailed walkthroughs of these programs in later videos, so don't be intimidated by them. The total cost to get started is about $1,500, so pretty similar to the basic screencast, with the added cost coming mainly from the better sound equipment and video editing software. The needed equipment includes everything from the basic screencast, plus a condenser microphone, a microphone stand, and the video editing software. I also use several household items to produce the basic and advanced screencasts and you can see these in the documents that list all the equipment. You probably already have them in your home. Each set of videos I've made will teach you how to make one of these types of videos. Video set one will teach you the pencil and paper video. Video set two will teach you the basic screencast. And video set three will teach you the advanced screencast. If you're still not sure whether my videos are the best way for you to learn video production, consider the following. I made these videos specifically for busy professors and teachers because I happen to be one. The purpose of these videos is to turn you into an independent video producer, able to make high quality videos at home or in your office, on your own schedule, and at your own pace. I'll include step-by-step -step instructions that you can reference as you move through the video production process. My videos include detailed tutorials for the screencasting and video editing programs. I'll also describe best teaching practices when it comes to using video to teach, and I'll talk a little bit about course design as well. Because you'll want your students to easily access your videos, I'll show you how to create a YouTube channel and upload your videos. And if you email me a link to your video, I'll check it out and give you some feedback.
Lastly, I'll show you how I create learning guides to make sure students are viewing and writing down what's in your videos. Of course, you can create your own assessments as well, and I encourage you to do this, but I think a learning guide is a pretty good place to start. Last, and perhaps most important, these videos are completely free. Not only that, but you are free to share these videos with anyone. You may also embed them in your website. I've licensed these videos under a Creative Commons license so that they can be shared as easily as possible. Because education is for everyone. Okay, so at this point you should have a good idea of the three different types of videos I can teach you how to make. I do want to emphasize though, anyone can make good educational videos for their students. Your video doesn't have to be this slick piece of movie making for your students to learn from it. At this point, start thinking about which of the three types of videos you think is best for you, but don't decide just yet. Next, check out the next three videos in this series. The first is a pencil and paper video, the second is a basic screencast, and the third is an advanced screencast. Then you'll have a better idea of what each of these three types of videos is about and make a better decision as far as which one you want to try. Now, I think with a project like this, the hardest thing is getting started. So at this point, I'll leave you with a quote from William Wordsworth. To begin, begin.